Good morning, my dear friends, and a very warm welcome to all of you in the C Learning Program. Friends, I hope you remember which lesson we are doing and who am I. Okay, so in the science session, you are welcomed by Harsha Ma'am. A very warm welcome to all of you and I hope you remember which lesson we are doing. We are doing the lesson which is atoms and molecules. Let us have a quick look at the lesson which we have done. Whatever part we have discussed up till now, let us understand. So here is the quick recap of it. The very first one is the history of atoms. The basic idea of divisibility that anything is divisible was given by Maharshi Kannad. He states that any padarath can be divided into parmanus and this parmanus are the smallest part. Coming to the next part, which was this, Pakuda Katyayan and Democritus and Lucifer. If we talk about Pakuda Katyayan, then he elaborated the laws uh, that are, and he elaborated the laws and he said that all the particles, whichever we are using, they are in the combined state with some or the other element and uh, they are like uh, they are giving, they are a form of matter. Then Democritus and Lucifer, they said that when we go on dividing the matter, finally we end up with something which cannot be divided further. Then came Lavoisier, the father of the modern chemistry, who stated uh, the very important two laws of chemical combination, that is law of constant proportion and law of conservation of mass. In our textbook, Prachi textbook, one more, that is law of multiple proportion is included, but it is actually a form of Dalton's law. So we have done it separately. Coming to the laws of chemical combination, the first law, law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed. Total amount of mass will constant. Here it is, this is the way to write. And here important point was this, that quantity will never change in any of the chemical reaction, which states that mass of the reactants will be equal to the mass of products. Coming to the next part, the reactants and products. What is the meaning of the word reactant and product? So those substances which combine and they form new substances. So those which are combining are called as reactants. The new products are called as, the new substances are called as products and this is how any chemical reaction is taking place. Then you are having next one small example over here of calcium oxide and water, 56 plus 18, what will you give? Get 74 gram of calcium hydroxide and this is how the law of conservation of mass can be verified. In your textbook, they have given some other example. It's not so tough, just it's you have to plus, do plus and minus. Moving to the next part, which is law of constant proportion. Law of constant proportion, it states that in any chemical compound, the elements are present in some particular proportion by mass. If it's carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, whichever, wh whichever compound it is, they are present in some fixed ratio by mass. And we had also calculated ratio of few particular thing. Because this law was given by Joseph Louis Proust, it is also called as famously the Proust law. Carbon 
and oxygen carbon dioxide carbon monoxide they are combining but fixed proportion and here it is the very important examples which uh, we had derived regarding their mass try to recall and read this content read this then we discussed about the law of conservation uh, law of multiple proportion <coughs> what was the law of multiple proportion law of multiple proportion was whenever the law of multiple proportion was that in any particular uh, in an, any uh, particular two elements or two or more than two elements they can combine in more than one ratio and they can form different compounds try to recall we had the done the uh, explanation by using this formula h2o and h2o2 co and co2 two different elements they can combine in more than one ratio and they can form different compounds this is the next particular law which we started now we are going to the next particular part which is the dalton's atomic theory first before learning about the postulates let us understand about what did dalton say here it is about the john dalton he was a meteorologist and a physicist and he is very well known in the development work Uh, of modern atomic theory and his research into color blindness this is all what he has done this personality the great personality coming to the dalton's atomic theory he has given about six postulates in our book they are uh, they have combined to and written but we'll see all john dalton uh, he gave the atomic theory and it is popularly called as dalton's atomic theory in his name he gave the theory on the basis of the chemical combination and explained them and in his theory he explained all the things regarding the atom and he postulated some of the law uh, some of his postulates are over here all the six postulates first of all any matter any of the matter when you go on dividing it finally the thing which is indivisible is atom so this is his first uh, postulate that elements are made up of extremely small particles which are called as atom on dividing matter go on dividing go on dividing the finally small portion which you get it is atom next atoms of a given element are identical in size mass and the chemical properties now what does this state what is the meaning of this particular statement let us try to understand it atoms of a given element that means let us talk about any one element let us say oxygen then all the atoms of oxygen uh element will have same mass same size and identical properties chemical properties
Now, what does this mean that is having same mass, same size and identical chemical properties? It means that any atom of oxygen you see in whole of the universe, you will find that it is of same size, you will find that it is of same mass and you will find that all the oxygen are having same properties. If anywhere you find out oxygen and check out its mass, check out its properties, you will find the same thing. That is the second postulate. That is elements of the same element, they are identical in size, mass and the chemical properties. Look over here, the second postulate. Atoms of a given element, a particular element. They are identical in size, mass and other properties. The next particular postulate, instead of given element, they have written different elements. That means when you compare hydrogen and oxygen, these are two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen, what is its atomic mass? 16. Hydrogen atomic mass is 1. Next, uh, hydrogen, whenever it uh, burns, it produces this crackling sound on heating. While what will this do? Or pop up sound, more proper word is pop up pop up sound. Because oxygen is supporting combustion, this is how the chemical properties will be little bit different. Hydrogen and oxygen are having different atomic mass. So when we are considering two different elements, then both the elements are having different physical properties, different chemical properties and they are having different mass and size. So, I hope you are clear with the content that I am teaching. The third postulate, first postulate, every element is made up of smallest particle which is called as atom. Second postulate, atoms of same element are identical in mass, identical in size and identical in chemical properties. Coming to the third postulate, atoms of different element are different in size, different in mass and they have different chemical properties. This is the third postulate which you studied. Let us move further. The fourth one which you can say it is the law of conservation of mass. What did the law of conservation of mass stated? It stated that we can neither create or not destroy a uh, mass. Now what is mass made up of? That element is made up of ultimately atoms. So the next particular law is depicting the law of conservation of mass which states that atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed. Okay. So the very first four postulates very easy fun. Try to memorize over here only. All the postulates are very easy. Elements are made up of smallest particles which are called as atoms. Atoms of a given element are identical in mass, size and chemical properties. Atoms of different elements are different in their mass, size and chemical properties. Next, atoms can neither be created nor be 
destroyed. That is the next particular postulate. After that, you are having that atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratio to form chemical compounds. This is what we have done as the law of constant proportion and multiple proportion. If instead of last two postulates, you write both the laws that is law of constant proportion and law of multiple proportion, then it is one and the same thing. I hope you are understanding. If instead of this two postulates, if you write the two laws of chemical combination, that is what the law of constant proportion and law of multiple proportion, then also it is good. It is one and the same thing. Only the fact is the different words are used. Okay, atoms, they combine in simple whole number. This is important. Or do ponu every atom na hoy. Okay, so it is a particular, in a particular manner you have to write it. Atoms of different elements, they combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. That is the law. In chemical reaction, atoms are combining, are they are either com combined, separated or rearranged. That means, uh, again, that there is no change in the mass, okay. So, I hope you are clear with the whole of the atomic theory is now clear. Please note down the important postulates of Dalton, then we will move further. Be quick in noting. There are six points.
so i hope you have noted all the postulates of dalton's atomic theory going to the next point which is the merits of dalton's atomic theory merits means plus points and minus points demerits means minus points now whatever thing any of the particular scientist is doing uh then there there are some kind of restrictions on their uh, theory like uh they are, sometimes they are not able to properly explain the concept so and by the discovery of new things uh, things are changing and that's how dalton's atomic theory is also having demerits so each and everything is a coin is having two sides in the same way his postulates are having some of the merits and demerits so here are the merits of dalton's atomic theory the very first merit of dalton's atomic theory is it could explain the laws of chemical combination once again what are his laws the very first one is elements are made up of extremely small things which are called as atoms second one was atoms of a particular element they are identical in uh, size shape and chemical properties atoms of different elements are having different size shape and chemical properties atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction uh the atoms are either uh, rearranged but there is no destruction of it the next and the last one was at uh, elements of different elements are combining in different propor uh, proportions that is in the whole number ratios and they are forming different compounds this postulates all the postulates they could explain the laws of chemical combination we understood the law of uh, conservation of mass because atoms are neither created nor destroyed moreover the last postulate that is in any chemical reaction the atoms are rearranged that is also depicting the law of conservation of mass before that the elements are combining in simple whole number ratio to form different compounds that is depicting the law of constant proportion so this laws are explained by his postulates that is one of the very big plus point the next thing is he was the first one who was able to differentiate between the atom and a compound so that is his next postulate okay i hope you are getting this these are the two 
merits that is the two plus points of the Dalton theory. This postulates could explain the loss of chemical combination and the difference between the atom and the compound was properly explained by him. So, these are the merits. of the Dalton's atomic theory. Note down this, then we'll move further and discuss the demerits. Be quick. Let's move further on the next particular fact that is the drawbacks of the Dalton's atomic theory. So, few of the drawbacks of the Dalton's atomic theory. What are the drawbacks? They said that uh, any matter can be finely divided into atoms and it is the smallest part of the matter. That means atoms are indivisible. Even the name of the word atom states that it is which means indivisible, but this fact is now not uh, correct. Why? Because we already know that atoms are further divided into protons, neutrons and electrons. Even this protons and neutrons are divided into quarks, which you will study further in your later studies. So, the very first thing that was the drawback of the Dalton's postulate was this that he stated that atoms are indivisible, but now we know that atoms can be divided further into protons, neutrons and electrons. So, here it is.
that is his first postulate. The next uh, drawback of the Dalton's atomic theory. He stated that atoms of a given element are identical in mass. That means that oxygen can have only mass 16. Try to recall, we had taken oxygen. That means that hydrogen can have only mass 1. No, there are 3 isotopes of hydrogen that is 1,1H, protium, deuterium and tritium. In the atmosphere, they are existing in these three forms. Carbon, C14, C12. So, in case of isotopes, this postulate that atoms of same element are identical in mass is not uh, correct. Okay? So, this is how the Dalton's atomic theory got wrong over here. So, this was isotopes were an exception to it and this is how it is one of the drawback came. Moving to the next particular drawback of Dalton. What was the next drawback of Dalton? Yes, there is even one more drawback. Which one is that now? He stated that atoms of different element have different masses. Now, if atoms of different elements have different masses, then what about isobars? Calcium and argon both are different elements, yet they have same atomic mass 40. What about them? So, this is the thing which Dalton could not explain. Okay. So, the next, the third drawback and the last drawback of his postulates. He gave 5 to 6, six postulates as per, but five in your textbook they have combined two among those five two are I mean, uh, three are at drawback so means two are uh, totally correct while the remaining three are having some exceptions okay so coming to the next postulate next drawback the next drawback over here is as per Dalton's postulate, atoms of different elements have different masses. But in case of isobars, this was not explained.
so i hope you are clear with the drawbacks please note down this drawbacks then we'll move further chalo be quick last demerit noted down so i hope you are clear with the content now let's have a quick look at what our part we have done today important part which we have done today is this that is the postulates its merits and demerits the rest of the part was the revision but this was the one of the important answer it is for your exam even now uh, its its applications are just too good elements are made up of extremely small particles which are called as atoms atoms of a given element are identical in size shape and chemical properties atoms of different elements are different in size shape and chemical property atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed next is uh, atoms of different elements they combine in simple whole number ratio whole number means uh, the particular you know 1 2 3 4 5 like that half and one that two and half like that way it doesn't exist to form chemical compounds and in chemical reactions atoms are either combined or separated or rearranged that means the overall mass will remain constant or you can say fixed then next thing which we had the discussion was regarding the merits and demerits here it is 
matters of the Dalton's atomic theory. This postulates could explain the laws of chemical combination that is the law of conservation of mass, law of constant proportion. The difference between the atom and the compound was explained properly by the Dalton's law. Next, the drawbacks, the negative points regarding the Dalton's atomic theory. The very first one was atoms uh, like it was it is said that atoms are indestructible that means you cannot divide them further but they could be divided further into proton, electron and neutron. In your further studies you will also learn that proton, neutron and electrons are further divided into quarks. Yes, these are right now the smallest known uh, thing. Q U A R K quark and you will learn in your quantum mechan uh, 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 quantum theory further when you go in this concepts. So that is about the Dalton's theory. The first drawback. The second drawback is he could say that atoms of the given element they are identical in shape, size. This is what he said, but this postulate could not explain about the isotopes. We had a quick, uh, like when we were discussing at that time, we had a quite examples. You see carbon, you see hydrogen, you see. All these are having their own isotopes. That means, what are isotopes? Those sub elements which are having same atomic number but different atomic mass. So, they, those uh, particular things are categorized as isotopes. Iso means same, topos means place. Having the same place in the periodic table. That means their atomic number is same. That means it is the same element. But yet atomic mass is different. This was not explained by the Dalton's postulate. Next. The Dalton's postulate again could not explain about the ISO. Now what are ISO bar? Those elements which are having, I hope you remember, same atomic mass but different atomic number like calcium having atomic mass 40, iron having atomic mass 40, atomic number is different that means both of them are different elements. So this is the third drawback about the Dalton's postulate. He stated that atoms of different elements are having different mass and different properties. But in case of isobars, this wasn't satisfied. And with this, we conclude of our today's session. I hope you have understood all the content that has been taught to you. And do your homework regularly and uh, stay safe. That's all for today's content. Thank you so much for listening to me and have a very good day. Bye-bye.